Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a very early start on Supercars of London. Today, I'm aiming to do 24 hours with the AMG GTS and document what it is like to live with such a car. So first things first, I need to jump in hit some traffic and talk about the early morning commute. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to half past eight. On a day that I don't actually have to be up for anything important until about 11 o'clock, I wanted to come out, take the AMG GTS on its morning commute. Half past eight is half an hour before most schools start, most offices open. So this is one of the busiest periods on UK roads and already I'm stuck in traffic. But the idea is to get an understanding of what this car is like to live with day to day and what this car is like stuck in traffic. Now my idea for my morning commute was to head directly to the M25 where as a lot of you will know the M25 is probably the UK's best and biggest example of a car park and a free car park as well but I'm stuck in traffic nowhere near the M25 and didn't really think this through. If we're gonna if we're gonna review the AMG GTS in traffic on the morning commute, then we kind of need to take out the human mentality that is, I need to get to where I'm going, this is so annoying, why are there people going faster than me in that lane? Why are there people going faster than me in that lane? Why is my lane always the slowest? That is exactly what I think every single time I'm on the M25 and then you see people zipping up the hard shoulder or zipping up the slip lane and then cutting in and slowing everyone else down because it backs it up. But the AMG is known and famous for having one of the most beautifully designed interiors ever to exist in a sports car, GT car or supercar. And why I'm saying all three of those is because today we're gonna to find out how each of those specific departments within the car world, this car fits into not only perfectly, but is one of the best cars within those separate categories. So to begin with, let's talk about what it's like as a city car, as a car in traffic. And I have to say, the only negative that I can find is the seats are so comfortable that you may fall asleep at the wheel. Just leaning back into this headrest, I don't know whether you can see just how soft and spongy that is. Leaning back, oh, it is like lying on the pillow that I was just on 15 minutes ago. It's so well designed. The seats, these are the standard AMG comfort seats with the red and the black twist. But they're the best seats I've ever sat in. The best seat I have ever sat in. I prefer to sit in these than sit in my living room, settee, sofa, or armchair. Now the next uh, instalment of the day usually involves some sort of photo shoot for SOL clothing featuring this man. <laughs> the GoPro's running, they can't see you. I forgot how good this thing looks. <laughs> you can see it in the distance looking all menacing. Oh, no, it, does look, it does look mean. So around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, there's usually some sort of photo shoot to be done, which is why Alex Carms is here. And we're headed off to some lovely country lanes to not only take some cool pictures of the cars, the new accessories for SOL clothing, but I am also here to answer the question, can you put the, back, the power down properly <laughs> in 625 brake horsepower on some lovely British B roads? Individual mode engaged, meaning that traction is in sport mode, everything else is in race mode. Alex is primed and ready. And now we're gonna have some fun. The steering becomes a little bit more weighted. But we do break traction. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> That's kind of like the first acceleration of the day though. So I feel like with the warmer the tires get, fingers crossed, the more traction we get. This is the European muscle car. Oh, oh my God. I've never heard that noise before. Right at the top of the rev range, you sort of lift off from the accelerator and it just bangs. The next step in the majority of my days, if I'm driving, will involve in grabbing some food. And as you might be familiar with Supercars of London, I'm quite partial to a McDonald's drive through for two reasons. One, the convenience, and two, I try and go as healthy as possible. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You've just said to me that you skip breakfast and that you're starving. Yes. So Alex here is, is it, is it vegan or vegetarian? Pescatarian. Pescatarian, so yeah. you can have fish. Correct. So, okay, which is why you want a fillet of fish. Yes. I've never, <laughs> never met someone that's ordered a fillet of fish before. I'm the only person in history. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what it is when you order it. <laughs> they have to look at some instructions. Yeah. Secret menu, yeah. fish. <laughs> Little does Alex know, I'm probably going to do a McDonald's route there. Here we go, get nice and close to the curb. Hiya, oh yeah, could I order exactly what the car in front has ordered, please? A duplicate order. I totally forgot what that was before. <laughs> Can you order me a mi two meals of anything? Anything? Anything, yeah. Okay. With a Yeah. And then a four pounds a meal and a coat. Brilliant. That, that sounds nice. And it's £9.18 at six. Thank you. She just made that order up. Well, I haven't ordered Alex's fillet of fish. Or not, she not a fillet of fish. <laughs> We've got a Big Mac, so you can either take the meat out of that, or a quarter pound of cheese. <clears throat> or do you just want the chips? I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll have the chips, you can have the two burgers. <laughs> Cheers. Don't spill them. Oh, it's two packs? Yeah, I've got two meals. I'm thoughtful like that. <laughs> Tunnel incoming. I like the FF, I think it's sick. Maybe a really highly specced 911. 
three. Oh, it'd be a really <laughs> high spec type of three. Uh, high, I really, really high spec 911. Okay. You know when um, I drove that red Carrera um, 2S from Porsche Culture Stuff? Yes. That car was 115 grand. Yep. Would you have that red Porsche over the, one of these? No way. <laughs> this has got substantially more power and usability. Yeah. And you don't see them on the road hardly as much yeah. as you do all of the Porsches. And do you know what I think is great about this car? It looks like a full-on Supra with a really long bonnet, like yeah. the UFO cabin, like the rear lights look incredible. Yeah. Whereas a Porsche looks like a Porsche and everyone knows that. Yeah. You look at this, you like, can... someone who has no clue about cars looks at this like, what is that? That's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I like. So, again, I've kind of summarised the long journeys, the B roads, the traffic, the driving around town. I'm going to take this car to a meeting, which I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey. I'm going to show you what it's like to park and how usable it is to just do normal things like go and park it in a car park, which if you had a Lamborghini, you'd be pretty scared to park it anywhere because someone might open the door on it. We've made it to Dub Customs and I've got out of the car and I've noticed that this is by far the worst weather condition for the satin black chrome wrap because it just looks matte grey. We've made it. We're here and I'm getting pestered by Fords. This is going to be the most Ford heavy car park. Oh, there's a Lotus in here. Uh, in, in here we go. Business visitors car park, do you reckon? I reckon so. Let's see if I can squeeze in here. I'm going to go and park next to this lovely red Mustang. I just quickly want to film these two cars together because they look cool. Yeah, they look cool. And I'm at Ford's Essex headquarters. So now I'll put this back in. That's, oh, there we go. There we go. And that is that. That is a day with my AMG GTS that is now parked downstairs at Dub Customs. It's gonna live here for a couple of days whilst it gets cleaned and prepped, and then I will be here to pick it up. So we've gone through the commute, we've gone through sitting in traffic, we've gone through going through the towns, we've gone through going, smashing the car through some B roads in individual setting with traction with a little bit of play, and we've gone through how good of a car it is on the motorway as a cruiser. Like I said in the video, it is possibly the perfect utility vehicle. Me and Alex had a bit of a discussion, what is the best car that you can buy for 100 grand, 110,000 pounds, that you can only have one car, but the most fun, usable every single day. And literally, the AMG GTS is definitely a contender for being up there. Evo car of the year, it was in that video. It didn't win, but it was in it. So that's all that matters. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you very soon for some more footage of the AMG, the BMW M3, and all sorts of other adventures that I'm currently planning. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys.